Umpires for tonight's game will be John James behind the plate. Mike Thompson's at first base. Fred Spen is at second base, and the third base umpire is Jeff Brown. And as you're aware, the umpires of Major League Baseball are still not working, and these are amateur umpires to some extent. Fred Spen is a professional umpire. Joe Tate and I were talking prior to the going on in the air. Some interesting comments in the newspapers this morning. The, all of the Major League Baseball, they have some of the umpires who are, I don't know whether they're on strike or they're locked out, difference of opinion, how you phrase it, but they're not working. And they pick at the ballpark, and they are passing out literature outside the ballpark, and are, they are extensively interviewed by television and radio people, and of course newspaper people. Here in the Texas papers this morning, the, one of the umpires was quoted as saying that if Fred Spen umpires in the American League, he will never work with him, he will never ride in the same taxi cab with him, and he will never go any place that he is. Fred Spen uh, is a professional umpire and he's been signed apparently to a three-year contract by the Major League. And the other umpires say that when they go back to work, they don't say if, I think they know that someday this thing will be settled, they'll go back to work. But they say there's not a Major League umpire presently who will ever work in the same ballgame with Fred Spen, so... This uh, situation is uh, not good to start with, and as it is prolonged, I think there'll be some more hard feelings and some harder feelings go along, and it's uh, really not good for the game and for anybody. And hopefully it'll be settled one of these days in the near future. In Major League Baseball this afternoon in the American League, Toronto is to play at Chicago. It has been postponed because of rain. They'll try it again tomorrow afternoon. New York is at Baltimore. It is Figueroa against Palmer. Each team scored two in the first inning. They have now played three, and it is two to two. Chris Chambliss had a home run in that game. His first of the year just came in the fourth inning, and so the Yankees have taken at least a 3-2 lead. They're still batting in the fourth. Detroit is in Kansas City. They'll try it again after being rained out last night. Billingham against Gura. Later on, Minnesota's at California. The Twins bombed the Angels in Tanana last night, 8-1. Oakland will be in Seattle. And Boston and Milwaukee are not scheduled. They'll play their final game in that series tomorrow. In the National League, the St. Louis Cardinals were to entertain the Chicago Cubs, and they were rained out. Montreal and New York played. They went 11 innings. Yesterday, they went 14. Today, they did it in 11. And it was, again, it was Montreal winning it by a count of 3-2, to two, the same score they beat him by yesterday. Three runs on 10 hits and no errors for Montreal. Two runs, nine hits, and one error for the Mets. They had just 5,980 in New York. It was Rogers, Sosa, Fryman, and Bonson for Montreal. Falcone and Lockwood worked for the Mets with the win going to Sosa, the save for Bonson, and it was Lockwood taking the loss. Sosa, already in this young season, has won two and lost one. Tony Perez had a home run in the 11th inning to win that game. Cincinnati's at Atlanta tonight. Cincinnati Reds are leading 5 to nothing. Atlanta batting in the bottom half of the third. That's Hume against Solomon. Pittsburgh in Philadelphia, Bly Levin against Carlton, and they're all tied up at one. They have gone three innings. The Dodgers will be in Houston with Sutton going against Ken Forsh, and San Diego will be in San Francisco, and that rounds out the Major League Baseball action. And in the NBA tonight, playoffs underway, New Jersey at Philadelphia, Atlanta will be in Houston. And here in Arlington, Texas, they tell us it is 67 degrees, the wind is blowing in from right field, but it's uh, right now just a very gentle breeze, and it really should not affect the flight of the baseball too much. Eric Wilkins warming down in the Indian bullpen. His opposing pitcher, Steve Coma, has finished his warm-up, and he is in the Ranger dugout waiting for the Rangers to charge onto the field. 330 feet down the left and right field lines here in Arlington, Texas. 400 feet to center field, 370 in the power alleys, and there's an 11-foot fence that circles the ballpark. There are seats completely circling this ballpark. It is really a one-deck affair, and the seats in the outfield are considered their bleacher seats and everything else around the other area are reserved of our seats. And we will now have the playing and the singing of our national anthem.
This broadcast is authorized in the broadcast rights granted by Cleveland Indians Company solely for the entertainment of a listening audience. Any rebroadcast will be used for the accounts and descriptions of this game without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians and 3WE Radio is prohibited. Steve Comer on the mound for the Texas Rangers. This young man has had a very interesting story. He went to the University of Minnesota. And Comer was not drafted. In June of 1976, they drafted 786 youngsters from colleges and high schools. They did not add Coma to their list. And funny things happened in baseball. During the Winter Instructional League that year in Sarasota, the manager of the Texas Ranger Farm Club needed some help, and he called the scout, Joe Marchese, from up around Minnesota. And he, in turn, called somebody else, and they put a call into Vic Sievitz, who was at the University of Minnesota. He's the baseball coach there. And they asked about Coleman. He said, I think he's a pretty good kid. They asked for his telephone number. and didn't take much to persuade him to head for Florida. Coleman then was working in a construction crew. He went to Florida, and what happened after that is history. He was 7-2 in 1976. He went to Tulsa in 77. He was 7-4, 6-4 four, in 1977 with Tucson. And last year with the Texas Rangers, 1-11 and lost 5 with an earned run average of 2.30. Against the Indians, he was 2-0 with an earned run average of 1.59. Toby Harris set, set to step in. Steve Coma set to go. Joe Tate is always ready to go, and he's here to tell you that it is. Beautiful night for baseball. Thank you, Herb. Good evening, everybody. The right-hander, Steve Comer, looks in, gets the sign from Jim Sunberg, the first pitch of the ball game. High and inside, off the mid of Sunberg, back to the screen, ball one. Toby Hare, right-hand batter, three for 17 on the year with an RBI, one for four in last night's ball game. Comer deals again, a swing and a miss, and the count evens at one and one. We have had a last-minute change for the Texas Rangers at first base. Putnam is playing first base in place of Jorgensen. 1-1 to Harrell, low and away. Two balls, one strike. I have heard nothing uh, to the contrary. I will assume that Putnam is in Jorgensen's number eight spot in the order. We'll just wait and see when they line him up offensively. Harrell stepping back. 2-1 count on the right-hand batter. Lined up by Comer. 2-1 pitch. And Harrell looks at a tighter for a swipe, and the count is two or two. Comer and Wilkins squared off in this one tonight at Arlington Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Comer ready. Now, not ready. Steps back. All set. Delivered. Harrell lifts a foul ball. That'll go to the right, and it'll also go well out of play. Sunberg giving chase, but no chance. And the count remains at two and two. Defensively, it is Putnam at first base, Wills at second, Norman at short, Bell at third, Sample in left, Oliver in center, Grubb in right, Sunberg catching, and on the mound, the right-hander, Steve Comer. Wind up, 2-2 two -two pitch. Hera takes the fastball low, and a full count of three and two. Dave Garcia coaching at third base. Joe Nasek on the first base side. Payoff pitch to Toby Hara. Sweet! Uh, there's something. Well, there's something you haven't seen, Joe. Sitting in the box seat area, a few rows behind the Indian dugout, Derwood Merrill and Jim Evans, American League umpires. They have their umpiring uniforms on and they're... I wonder if they paid to get in the ballpark. <laughs> Rick Manning, a left-hand batter. This will be his first at-bat this season. Bell to the edge of the grass at third. Comer delivers. Fastball low. Ball one. Rick had a good spring. He finished spring training getting five hits in his last six at-bats. Bobby Bonds on deck. Wind up in the 1-0 pitch. Breaking ball outside and high. 2-0. Comer has not faced a batter since he worked four innings against the Yankees in an exhibition game on March the 30th. Lined up in the 2-0 pitch, a foul ball well back out of play to the left, and the count is 2-1. Comer, 111 and lost five. He was 2-0 against the Indians in two relief appearances. Lined up by Steve in the 2-1 pitch, and Manning hits it hard to third. Bell on one knee, back hands up, throws got him. Went to one knee toward the foul line. Backhanded the ball, straightened up and threw out Manning. And there are two outs in the first inning. 
Bobby Bond. Bobby Bond. Bond, four for 18 of the year with a run batted in, 0 for 4 last night. Right hand batter. The outset, Herb Palmer looks very quick. Yes, he is. Pitch, a ball, low ball one. Throws the ball well, good slatter. He threw to, they got Toby Harris. A 1 0 pitch, and Thornton out, or uh, Bond's out in front of a breaking ball, and the count is 1 and 1. Changed up. One ball, one strike with two outs. Bonds being played to pull with power, and the ball is bunted foul back to the base of the screen. One ball, two strikes. Andre Thornton on deck. In the top half of the first inning, Steve Comer looks and gets the sign from Sunbird. One, two, pitch to Bond, outside. Two balls, two strikes. Comer, 6'3", 207 pounds. Two, two, pitch. Again, out in front of the breaking ball, and this one is bounced foul over to the third base dugout. Avery Sello sitting on the dugout steps, picks it off. Two balls, two strikes. Bond kicking the dirt around to the batter's box. Harris struck out, Manning bounced to third, 2-2 two -two pitch to Bond, way outside, Sundberg leaping quickly to his right, picks it off, at a full count of three and two. Tomorrow night, wait against Jenkins in the finale of this series. And it's off to Boston. Here comes the payoff pitch, Bond swings away and chops it foul beyond the dugout, it's still three and two. Looks like the umpires had somebody else's seats there being asked to move. <laughs> That's the second time I've seen them move since they came in. <laughs> Somebody better check those stubs. <laughs> Here's the 3 2 pitch to Bonds. Wraps it back to the shortstop. On the third hop, Norman has it. Throws and got him by less than a step. So in the first inning, Steve Palmer puts him away. 1 2 3. And at the end of one half inning, the Indians nothing and the Texas Rangers are coming to bat. Here. Like you, you got your own thing to do. You like your beer, light and clear, refreshing like mountain air. You like your blue jeans, old dust, like your mountains, cold dust. Head for the mountains, the mountains of blue. Reach out and you'll be here. Just reach out and you'll be here in the mountains. Head for the mountains, the mountains of Bush. Reach out and you'll be here. Just reach out and you'll be here in the mountains of Bush. Don't just reach for a beer. Head for the mountains of Bush. Checking the defensive alignment for the Cleveland Indians, Andre Thornton at first base, Dwayne Kuyper at second base, Tom Verizer at short, Toby Hera at third, Ted Cox in left, the center fielder Rick Manning, the right fielder Bobby Bond, the catcher is Gary Alexander down the mound, young Eric Wilkins, Frank Lucchese coaching at third base, but standing at first, and it will be Will Campbell and Oliver to test Eric Wilkins. Up Wills, a switch hitter going to the left side against right-hander Eric Wilkins. Two for eight on the season and 0 for four in last night's game. Harris comes to the edge of the grass at third, just inside the cut of the grass. And Eric Wilkins winds up and delivers, and the first pitch is ripped foul to the left, back up into the chairs. There's a fellow walking along with about ten hot dogs and six or seven soft drinks, and that thing went right by his ear. He didn't realize that he was in the flight path until he heard it go by. Oh, if that had hit, what a mess. Strike one, the count. Wind up. Wilkins throws to Wills. A line drive right at Wayne Kuyper. One out. Well, Wills smashes a liner right back to Kuyper at second base, and there's one down, and it brings on Bill Sample, the left fielder. 
sample, one for four with an RBI on the season and 0 for three with an RBI on the sacrifice fly last night. Sample sporting a red five trimmed in blue on the back of his white home Texas uniform. The Indians, of course, in the traveling gray. Tribe will be home next Tuesday against these Texas Rangers at 12.05 at the stadium. Lined up and the pitch, and Sample wraps a bouncer to his left. Toby Hara picks and throws. Got him. Toby Hara ranging along the edge of the grass, running towards second base. Made the pickup of the, uh, the bouncing ball and then threw a line into first, and that is two away. This brings on Al Oliver. Al Oliver was the hitting hero out here last night with two colossal clouts through a 40 mile an hour wind into the seats and right. A left hand batter. Three for eight on the year, two homers, five runs batted in. Two for four last night with two homers and three runs batted home. Lined up by Wilkins, and here comes the first pitch to Oliver, and he takes the strike of the knees, strike one. Harold pulled well off the line at third. Outfield pulled around. Strike one pitch, Oliver swing and a loose on a breaking ball, strike two. I have asked you this before, Herb, but it seems appropriate to ask again. Do you remember your first start in the big league? Yes, I do. What happened? Long time ago, back in Detroit. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Way back. <laughs> now, we won the game, but it was a struggle. Here comes the 0-2 pitch to Oliver. High fastball, 1-2. I think I walked 10 men. <laughs> I didn't wind up many times that day. It was always in the stretch. <laughs> <laughs> One ball, two strikes, and two outs. First inning. No score. Tribe went in order against Coleman. Wilkins winds up and delivers the one-two. And Oliver swing and a miss. Struck him out. Good fastball by Eric. Oh, it's three up, three down against Wilkins in the first. We've played one at Arlington. The score, Cleveland nothing, Texas nothing. What's the easiest, most economical way to get the crew to the game? In a van, a Dodge van. And they're just $46.58 today at Spitzer Dodge. Bill Gayhart and Spitzer Dodge are celebrating 75 years in the automobile business by giving you what may be the lowest prices ever on Dodge trucks and vans. Over 150 to choose from. Tough Dodge trucks, just $41.83. And Dodge vans, only $46.58. Come in and see us today at Spitzer Dodge in Columbus. It's different. It's exciting. It's the kind of club that you wish you'd known about sooner. Marco Polo, the super disco for people over 21. With the finest selection of current music and the sound system unconditionally guaranteed to shake your senses and your soul. Every Wednesday is ladies night and happy hour lasts all day long. Marco Polo, 1605 West 5th Avenue in Columbus. Right across from North Star. Of the Pirates going long ball. In the fifth inning of play, hitting a two-run homer. And that is going to put the Pirates on top four to two. The Yankees now have a five to two lead on Baltimore with Baltimore batting in the fifth. Andre Thornton leads off of the second inning for the Indians. One for 13 on the year with an RBI, one for four last night. Comer delivers and Thornton hits a bouncing ball to the shortstop. Norman picks it up, throws across, and there's one away. Andre Thornton grounding to the shortstop. Brings on Gary Alexander, the Cleveland catcher. Alex one for 13 in the year with an RBI and one for three in last night's ball game. Dodgers failed in the first at Houston tonight. Sutton against Ken Forsh, and of course the interesting sidelight or even highlight to that game is that Ken Forsh, who pitched a no-hitter the last time out, is going to try and go for two in a row tonight. Alexander, one out, nobody on. First pitch to Alex, going to bump the ball, shoves the bat back out of the way in time, ball one, pitch was away. Kind of opened up the middle for Alex with the center fielder shaded into left center, shortstop Norman pulled over and back. 1-0 pitch, and Alex hits a high fly ball to right field, going over his Johnny Grubb toward the foul line, reaches out, makes the running catch. Neatly done by Grubb and right to down. Here's Jim Norris with Manning back of the lineup. Norris has returned to the DH role and has been moved down to the number six spot of the order. 
Jim is six for 16 on the year and one for four in Wednesday night's ball game. Norris has hit safely in all four of the Indian ball games. He also has the team leadership in steals with three. Ted Cox on deck. Wind up on the pitch. Norris drives it off to the left, and it is a foul ball. Strike one. Strike one, the count. Fell in on the grass at third. Wind up on the strike one pitch. Fastball inside. One ball, one strike. Ted Cox on deck. Now the wind up on the 1-1 pitch. Norris fouls it back over the standing screen into the seats in the second section. This is, for all intents and purposes, a single deck of there all the way around, but they do have a raised section behind home plate. There is an upper deck behind us, up over the press box, swinging a foul to the screen. One ball, two strikes. That has just been recently added here. They put this ballpark together back, I believe, in about 1965 for Triple A ball. It seated 9,000. Bouncing ball off the bat of Norris to third on a high hop to Buddy Bill, who grabs and rifles to first just in time to get Norris. And the side is retired again, one, two, three. At the end of an inning and a half, it is Cleveland nothing, Texas nothing. Nobody quite like you. You got your own thing to do. You like your beer. Buddy Bell and Oscar Gamble come to bat this afternoon in the National League. Montreal went 11 to beat the Mets 3 to 2 on a Tony Perez home run. Cincinnati leads Atlanta 5 to 1 in the fourth inning tonight. Pittsburgh 4 to 2 over Philadelphia in the fifth. Still to be heard from San Diego and San Francisco, and the Dodgers fail on the first at Houston. Wind up by Eric Wilkins in the first pitch. The left hand batting Johnny Grubb is low, ball one. John, two for nine of the year with a home run, two runs batted in, and one for four in last night's contest. Lined up by Wilkins, and the pitch to Grubb, and John drills a foul to the left, back into the seat, and the count evens at a ball and a strike. And Grubb also broke his bat. Toronto and the White Sox rained out in Chicago this afternoon. They'll reschedule it for tomorrow. Yankees 5-2 to two over Baltimore now in the fifth. Detroit failed in the first in Kansas City. That's Bellingham against Gura. Boston and Milwaukee are not scheduled. Minnesota plays in California and Oakland and Seattle later tonight in the NBA playoffs. Philadelphia leads New Jersey at the end of the first quarter, 33-22. That is not a surprise, is it? No. I would, it not, does not surprise me. Who do you think is going to win? Washington. Ultimately. Washington. Washington. Yep. One ball and one strike. Pitch to Grubb. Bouncing ball, shortstop for Riser, gets it on the hop, fires the first. Grubb is gone, and there's one away in the second inning. And I think I have now probably just put the kiss of death on the Washington Bullets because I have a great facility for picking wrong. But they should win it. I, it's my way of thinking. Here's Buddy Bell. Bell won for eight of the year, one for four last night, had a double. Buddy defensively in these first two games has sparkled at third. Which is no surprise to us. <laughs> That's right. Lined up. And the pitch to Bell, that hit him. And inside fastball, with Buddy going by, and Bell has been hit by the pitch. Now Buddy trots down to first base. Texas trainer comes trotting out to see if he's all right. Trainer's still Ziegler. Just a glancing blow. Well, Bell at first, 
Alexander going out to talk to Wilkins with one out and now one on. Oscar Gamble, the left-hand batting designated hitter, is due. Oscar, one for four on the year, one for two last night. Gary Alexander going out to the mound to talk with Eric Wilkins. Calming down a bit. He's pitching with a man on first for the first time. Wilkins working from the stretch. Bell with a short lead at first base. Andre Thornton holding at the bag. The pitch is low and away, ball one. This is the home half of the second inning, and there is no score. Comer put the first six Indians away in order, and Wilkins exposed to the first four Rangers before hitting Buddy Bell, and now Gamble at bat with Bell at first base. And the 1 0 pitch. Oscar drills one back over the screen into the seat. The count is even at one and one, and a fan down below has made a fine catch. One one count. Gamble sporting a full beard and a clipped afro. <laughs> Same amount of hair, just relocated. Throw over to first base, Bell diving back to the bag. Didn't have to, it was just a lob throw, but Buddy's taking no chances. Hit the deck. And the home plate umpire, John James, goes to work with a whisk broom. The stretch. And Wilkins delivers the 1-1 pitch. Gamble takes low. Two balls and a strike. We'll be getting a station break for you here very shortly. Look for the sign. Wilkins the stretch. Bell leads at first. 2-1 pitch. Gamble chops the ball foul into the first base dugout. And now we will pause for station identification. This is the Cleveland Indians baseball network. This is Spend Your Sunday Mornings with Gene Beatty here on 3WJ. That's WWWJ Johnstown. Two-two count. Wilkins to Gamble, bouncing ball, off the glove of Thornton, ricochets off the Kuiper, and everybody's safe. Thornton going to his right, got the heel of the glove on the ball, the vice versa. Bounced way up in the air. Charge with an error. Charge to Andre Thornton, and now the Rangers have runners at first and at second. And nobody out, uh, one man out. This brings on the catcher, Jim Sunberg. Sunberg, one for seven in the year with an RBI and 0 for three in last night's ball game. Right-hand batter against the right-hander, Eric Wilkins. One out here in the second inning. The pitch to Sunberg, he poured him a fastball, strike one. Stretch by Wilkins, runners leading first and second. Strike one pitch to Sunberg, fastball inside. One ball, one strike. On deck is Pat Putnam. First baseman, a last minute substitution in the starting lineup. Stretch, look back, and pitch. Fastball low, two and one. Putnam and Sample and Norman will be at least somewhat familiar with Wilkins uh, because of the PCL. I think he said he told you last right. night he pitched against him once. Stretch, 2-1 pitch. Fastball inside. 3-1 the count. Alexander steps out in front of the plate, throws the ball, and a few words of encouragement back to Eric Wilkins. Eric is not missing by a lot. He's just missing almost in the same spot, just above the knees off the inside corner. Rupp opened the inning with a ground ball to short. Buddy Bell was hit by a pitch, and Oscar Gamble safe on an error charge to Andre Thornton. 3-1 count on Jim Sunberg. Stretched by Wilkins in the pitch. He flips it low ball for him. The bases are loaded with one out. Bell goes to third. Gamble down to second. Sunberg on at first. And out to the bound, Charlie Hartenstein. The batter is Pat Putnam. 
Putnam, a left-hand hitter, two for three on the year with three RBIs. And on top of that, he had a pinch hit single for a run batted in here last night. At Tucson last year, Putnam hit 309 with 21 homers and 96 RBIs. So Hartenstein has had a chat with Wilkins and heads back into the dugout. Number 18. And Pat Putnam gets ready. The Rangers have loaded the bases. We're in the second inning, and there is, to this point anyway, no score in the ballgame. First pitch, Putnam lifts a foul ball off to the left, a souvenir out of play, and the count is strike one. Bell at third, Gamble at second, Sunberg at first. Wind up in the pitch, swing, and a miss. Went for a pitch down below the knees. That right might here. have been the fourth ball. Looks like the bottom really fell out of it. Wilkins waiting while Putnam steps back and now steps back in. Wilkins standing erect on the mound, gets the sign, glances over to third. Here's the pitch to Putnam, foul ball back over the screen into the seat. And the count is strike two. Base is loaded, one out. Lined up on the pitch. Putnam went for one low, gets away from Alexander. He goes back quickly, picks it up on the edge of the grass behind home plate, and there's no advance at third by Buddy Bell. Alex gives the ball back to Eric Wilkins, and Eric takes that walk back to the mound. A hit batter, an error, and a walk. A blow to the bases for the Rangers with one out of the second inning. On deck is the shortstop Nelson Norman, the number nine man on the Texas order. Wilkins cranks up the one-two pitch to Putnam. Bat ball low and inside. Two balls, two strikes. Putnam with a 18 and red on the back of the home white. Steps back and then in. Rotates the bat. And ready. Two-two pitch. Swing and a bouncing foul. Back to the screen. That remains even at two balls, two strikes. Home half of the second inning. Rangers won last night's ball game five to nothing. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch to Putnam. A high fly ball to right center field. To his right, Bobby Bond makes the catch. Here comes Bell. The throw's going to third base. Right on over to Harrow. The run scores from third on Buddy Bell. Took to the plate. Putnam with a sacrifice fly. The Rangers lead one to nothing. Bell scoring from third base, but there's no further advance. First run of the ball game, and it was accomplished without a base hit. So it's two on and two out. There's Nelson Norman, the shortstop right hand. Norman one for four on the year, one for two last time. Gamble at second, Sunberg at first. The stretch by Wilkins. And the pitch to Norman. Swing and a miss. Strike one. On deck is Bump Will. The stretch. Look back and the strike one pitch and Norman jammed with a fastball. The count is even at a ball and a strike. Look in for the sign. A stretch. Look back. 1-1 one, one pitch. Hit hard up the middle. Verizon dives. Ball off his glove into center field. Gamble scores. Ball pops away from Manning, but he stays with it. Sundberg stops at second, and it's an RBI single for Norman to make it through to nothing. Tommy Verizon came within about a half a foot of grabbing that ball. It just went off the end of the glove. 
First hit, second run. Both these runs will be unearned, incidentally. And that brings up the top of the order. Well, Eric Wilkins now is just about done at all. He has had a strikeout. He's walked the batter. He's given up a hit. He has hit a batter. Sunberg stops at second base. Bump will be open with a line drive to the second base. Texas leads two to nothing. Arrow coming into the edge of the grass at third base. First base side dropping back for the left-hand batter. Stretched by Wilkins with a pitch to Will. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Next was two runs, one hit. The Indians no runs, no hits, and an error. The stretch. And the pitch. Line drive in the center field. A base hit. Rounding third is Sunberg. Here comes Manning. Throw to the plate. He is out at the plate. Fine throw by Rick Manning. Manning fired his strike to Alexander who put the tag on Sunberg sliding in. And the inning is over. A base hit. Well, that makes the final totals for the frame. Two runs, two hits and an error with a man left, with two men left. And the score at the end of two innings of play, Texas 2, Cleveland nothing. At Shell Auto Care, being good with your hands isn't good enough. Their mechanics have to pass tests for brake work, tune-ups, air conditioning, and front-end work. They have to be certified by Shell, the National Institute for Automotive Service Excellence. You know, it's funny. A lot of people don't expect much from mechanics, but they're the people who haven't been to Shell Auto Care. It's everything you never expected car repairs to be. Sunset in the mountains. The sparkling waters in each stream slowly turning to shining gold. The high craggy peaks quietly glow in the fading light. And the stillness falls like a soft secret snow. It's time to sit back, relax, and feel good about the day. Sunset in the mountains. Don't miss it. Push. And for the mountains of Bush King. Anheuser Bush, St. Louis, Missouri. the top of the third inning, the bottom three in the Indians order, Ted Cox, Dwayne Kuyper, and Tom Verizer against Steve Comer. Texas, now with a two to nothing lead. Steve Comer has retired the first six men in a row. On the scoreboard, Cincinnati has now really done a job on Atlanta again tonight. It is 9-1 with the Braves batting in the fifth inning of play. Dave Concepcion had a grand slammer in that big four-run fifth. Ted Cox. Teddy, 0 for 8 of the year. Well, that can't be. They got him 0 for 8 of the year and 1 for 4 last night. <laughs> Cox. Well, his league stats have him 0 for 8 on the year. But he was one for four last night. That's right. And in fact, was two for eight coming in, so he is really three for 12 on the year. I'm not sure where they got the 0 for eight. Well, the other day they had uh, Cage without having hit two. Here's the pitch to Cox low, ball two. Well, I guess the computer doesn't get any spring training. The pitch is hit up in the air down the right field line off the bat of Cox. Putnam back, Wills over, Wills on the run, the bullpen, the ball drops. Wills called Putnam off the ball, but the ball kept sailing away from him. Putnam actually ended up closer to it than anybody else. So Teddy is 3 for 12 on the year rather than the 0 for 8 that I had given you earlier. Count is 2 and 1. Comer, 11 and 5 last year. Uh, Teddy Cox discovered his bat was broken and had to go back over to get another one. Detroit won to nothing over Kansas City at the end of two innings of play on a Wackenfoot's home run. 
Pittsburgh and Philly are 4-4 with the Phillies batting in the sixth inning at Philadelphia. There's a slap up the middle by Cox in the center field, a base hit. Comer put his bare hand up in the air and almost... You ought to be very contact. happy he didn't reach it. That is right. It was a shot up the middle into center field. That is the first Indian hit of the ball game. And it brings to bat Dwayne Kuyper. Kuyper, 4 for 15 on the season with two RBIs and two for four in last night's ball game. Now, Ken Porsche will not pitch another no-hitter tonight. Dodgers got him for a pair on the second inning. Yankees 5-2 to two over Baltimore in the sixth. First pitch, Cox on the go, and Kuiper bounced the ball foul back to the screen. Strike one count on the left-hand batting. Captain of the Indians, Dwayne Kuiper. Palmer looks in, working from the stretch for the runner at first base. Nobody out. Here's the pitch, and Kuiper takes low and away. One ball, one strike. Homer, the sign from Sunberg. The stretch, the pitch. Kuiper lifts a fly ball behind the shortstop. Norman, who'd come in, goes back. But Bell's back there and puts the ball right off the end of the glove. But he made the basket catch, but the ball was right on the fingertips of his glove, and he just hung on. One away, Cox at first, retreats to first base. Tom Verizer, right hand batting, shortstop, nine on the order, two for 14 of the year with a run batted in an 0 for 4 last night. The stretch and the pitch, and Tommy takes outside, ball one. We're in the top of the third, and the Texas Rangers have taken a two to nothing lead. Throw over to first base, back to the bag, goes Cox. Stretch of the pitch. Verizer takes low. Sunberg came up ready to throw, but Cox retreated to the back. The error in the second inning put both runs against Wilkins in the unearned category. Fine throw by Rick Manning that inning. Stop to consider Rick has not played since last Monday. Stretch of the pitch, Verizer bangs the ball foul over into the third base dugout. Two balls in the strike. Steve Comer wearing a red 11 on the back of his uniform. Cox leads it first, one out, one out. The stretch. And a throw over to first base. Teddy puts the foot back of the bag in time ahead of the tag by Putnam. August 5th, Comer won an inning in the third, picked up a 4-3 win. August 13th, he was a 6-5 winner in four and a third inning against Cleveland. There's a ball off the glove as Sunberg rolls down the third base line. Sunberg quickly on top of it. And there's no advance by Cox. Three balls at a strike. When Comer throws that fastball low and inside to the right hander, but low and away to the left hander, it really sinks. The ball just bore right in on him. So be here on deck. A stretch. Comer's 3-1 pitch to Verizer. Cox goes, and the ball is fouled back. 3-2. Full count of 3-2. Verizer keeping an eye on Dave Garcia, the Indians' third base coach. A stretch. And the payoff pitch runner goes. Verizer lifts the fly ball into center field. Oliver started back. Now he's coming on and makes the running catch. Cox on his way back to first base. The throw not quite in time. Goes to the pitcher backing up as it came through the first baseman on the bottom. Two down with Cox safely back at first base. 
Al Oliver is rapidly becoming a big hero down there. Two home runs last night didn't hurt him any. And, of course, he batted 324 last year. He is one of the better hitters in the American League. Tony Hara. Hara struck out swinging to start the ball game against Coleman. I was over in Salisbury at the Sportscasters and Sportswriters Convention. Here's the pitch, and Hara takes the strike, strike one. The host and hostess, Dr. Uh, Charlie and Marna Steinman. Marna is uh, a relative of Toby Harris. They come from Marion High School in Marion, Ohio. And Toby says, half the town is my relation. Throw over to first base, and Putnam had to go around the runner to flag that wild pitch down. He did. Cox at first base. A stretch, strike one pitch, bounces in December. Dr. Steinman is in your category, Herb. He turns in five miles a day, chugging up and down the streets of Salisbury. Doesn't look a day over 80. The way I feel. <laughs> one ball, one strike. The stretch, the pitch, and a foul fly. First base side, Putnam chasing, and lead a ticket. It's in the seat. One ball, two strikes. In the top half of the third inning, the Indians put the leadoff man, Ted Cox, on base with a single to center. The Kuiper popped up, and Verizer fly to center. And now Toby Harris trying to keep the inning alive with a 1-2 count. And Rick Manning on deck. Homer the stretch. And then he steps back. Homer works much more slowly with people on base than he does when base is empty. He surely does. Stretch, one, two, pitch, and another foul fly. That one is deeper into the seats on the right side. And the count remains with a ball and two strikes. Now, Coma doesn't like the baseball that he had, and he wants another one, the home plate umpire. David Clyde, I understand, released today from Lutheran Medical Center, which is good news. And we hope he'll be back with us soon. He's a fine young man. We miss seeing him around, and he's going to be a good pitcher. One, two, the count. Here's the pitch, and a bouncing foul right over through the on-deck circle and into the seat. Also good to see Wayne Garland back in an Indian uniform working out. He is eligible to come off the disabled list on April the 18th. So is Bo Diaz. I think he can get off on the 14th. Or the, I'm sorry, yeah, the 14th. The Garland's the 18th, and Diaz is the 14th. Right One ball and two strikes on Toby Hara. Stretch by Comer. Cox leads it first. Pitch to Hara. Outside. Throw to first base. And Cox scampers back to the bag. Jim Sundberg is a catcher who is not afraid to throw the ball. And he throws well. Now, there are some catchers who should be afraid to throw. That's right. And they still do. Sundberg is not afraid and throws extremely well. Breaking ball inside. Three and two now on Toby Hara. into Sunberg for the sign. A stretch. Pitch. Swing! And a miss. Toby Harris strikes out for the second time against Comer. And the inning is over. No runs and a hit with a man left at the end of two and one half innings of play. It is Texas 2, Cleveland another. When you get your car fixed at Shell Auto Care, you get a lot of things you'd never expect. Not only do you get a written estimate in advance, you get your old parts back to inspect. You get a mechanic who's been certified by Shell or the National Institute for Automotive Service Excellence. And when all is said and done, every repair is backed in writing. So bring your car to Shell. It's everything you never expected car repairs to be. Sample Oliver and Grubb in the third inning. National League tonight. Cincinnati 9, Atlanta 2 in the sixth. Pittsburgh and Philly are 4-4 in the seventh. The Dodgers and Houston are 2-2 in the third. 
check the American League in a moment. Here's the windup of the first pitch to Bill Sample. Fastball, high ball one. Sample bounced to the third baseman in the first inning. The Yankees 5-2 over Baltimore in the seventh. Kansas City now 2-1 over Detroit in the fourth. Here it is 2 nothing Texas, and we're in the third inning of play. Pitch to Sample, low. Two balls, no strikes. Al Oliver on deck. The pitch. Foul ball back over the screen. A through flew into the seat. Fortunately, it hit an empty chair. I'm going to tell you, I think before we come back next time, we'll see that other screen put up again. Somebody's going to get killed back yeah, here. Taking some heavy shots back there. Look in for the sign by Wilkins. Here comes the 2-1 pitch. High, high, foul fly over the first base dugout. Thornton to the railing. No chance. Six rows deep. Two balls, two strikes. Wilson, Thornton, Alexander all in the neighborhood. But the ball was into the chairs about six rows behind the first base dugout. Hi to Grandpa from Tony and Gary who are rooting for the Indians down here tonight. 2-2 two -two pitch. Sample outside. Fastball. Full count of 3-2. Folks have sent us the donuts last night are right back at it again tonight. Yes, they are. They greeted us outside the ballpark. Mike and Peggy Vancic. Here comes the 3-2 pitch. Low ball four. Sample walks to start the third inning. Second walk given up by Wilkins that brings on Al Oliver. Oliver a strikeout victim to win the first inning of play. Well, Loretta and Peggy's parents, Mr. and Mrs. Ray Jennison, are listening in, of course, again tonight. And Mike and Peggy Vansick are right here at the ballpark rooting for the tribe. Throw to first base, put Sample back of the bat. They're sitting just down below us. She has a Indian cap on, and she has a shirt with the Cleveland Indians marked on it. Stretch by Wilkins, the pitch to Oliver, wraps it by the mound. Verizon to the shortstop, flips over to Kuiper for the first play on Sample, but Dwayne had no chance to relay. Headman is gone, Sample out 6-4 to four if you scored shortstop for the second baseman covering. That's the first out of the second inning, puts Oliver at first base and brings on Johnny Grubb. John bounced to the shortstop in the second inning, and then the Rangers went to work for two runs. Rangers with two runs, two hits. The Indians, no runs, hit an error. Eric Wilkins looks in for the sign from Gary Alexander. Grubb, a left-hand batter, levels the lumber as Oliver takes the short lead at first. And Grubb wraps and stabbed to the mound by Wilkins, the second one. Riser throws back to first for the double play. Eric Wilkins fielding his position very neatly. Picks off the one hopper, turns it into a double killing, and the inning is over. No runs, no hits, a walk, and nobody left. At the end of three, Texas two, Cleveland nothing. It's a breakthrough in tire technology. Goodyear eliminates the winter tire changeover with Tiempo, the all-season steel belted radial. Tiempo by Goodyear is all the tire you'll ever need all year round. Tiempo is available at McFarland Brothers on Route 3 and 36, just south of Mount Vernon. If you drive a small car, a mid-sized car, an import, a standard American, and you want tires to fit and performance to match your car, the time to try Tiempo is now. McFarland Brothers, south of Mount Vernon on 3 and 36. It's different. It's exciting. It's the kind of club that you wish you'd learn about sooner. Marco Polo, the super disco for people over 21. With the finest selection of current music and the sound system unconditionally guaranteed to shake your senses and your soul. Every Wednesday is ladies' night, and happy hour lasts all day long. Marco Polo, 1605 West 5th Avenue in Columbus, right across from North Star. Figueroa against Palmer. Kansas City 2-1 over Detroit in the fourth. Billingham against Gura. And at the end of six innings of play, Cincinnati 9, Atlanta 3, with Tom Hume against Solomon, Devine, and Stoke. 
Here is inning number four with Herb Scores. Thank you, Joe Hagan, everybody. The Indians trailing two to nothing. They will have Manning, Barnes, and Thornton to see if they can solve the offerings of Steve Comer. So far, he is fan two and given up just one base hit, a single to Ted Cox leading off the third inning. Manning his first time grounded out to Buddy Bell, but he made a good play on him. Left-hand batter, pitch to him. Curve is high, ball one. Comer, tall, right-handed, throws. Low outside, ball 2-2-0. Two, 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 no. Manning backing away, checking with Dave Garcia. As we mentioned earlier, Manning played on last Monday in Tucson, did not play since that time. Strike over the outside corner, suffering from strep throat infection. It was weak yesterday, but the Indians came out and took an early workout. They worked out at 2.30 this afternoon and took some extra batting practice. 2-1 pitch. Line drive. Buddy Bell makes the play. Buddy Bell with a spectacular diving grab. A line shot to his right. He reached the cause, put him around. He landed on the ground, but he hung on to the ball. That was Texas fans are seeing what Indian fans have seen for many years. Buddy Bell takes the base hit away from Rick Manning. Here's Bobby Bonds, thrown out on a close play by the shortstop first time up. Low outside ball, and it's two good plays, but he's made on Rick Manning. When Buddy made that catch, Manning just stopped in the base path and stared into space. I don't blame him. Swing and a miss. He fooled him with a curveball. Ball on a strike. One man out. Indians trailing 2-0. We're in the fourth. The tribe will be back here tomorrow night. And it'll be Rick Waits going against Fergie Jenkins. Down to low. 7.35 game time here. 8.35 in the Eastern time zone. 2-1 pitch. Slide and missed outside. 3-1. and one. Playing Bobby around and left and deep. Three balls a strike. Andre Thornton on deck. Indians trying to get something rolling here in the fourth. Right through the middle. Three and two. Comer winds it up. Fastball bounced for it short. Cutting over Buddy. Grabs it. Throws. Gets him. Buddy Bell ranging to his left. Buddy putting on a pretty good show here tonight. Two men down in the fourth inning. And the bat is Andre Thornton. Andre with a ground ball to short his first time up. Andre in this young season has had one base hit in 14 at bats. Gary Alexander on deck. Inside with a slider ball one. Round ball, fouled at home plate. One ball and a strike. Phillies had a run in the last half of the seventh inning. It is now the Philadelphia Phillies five and the Pittsburgh Pirates four. Pirates are batting in the eighth. Still fly 11 against Carlton as far as we know. Ball one, strike one. The wind up, the pitch. Down too low with the slider, two and one. They want that ball examined. On the fire behind home plate is John James. He looks it over. And he says it's okay. Wind up. 2 1 pitch. High and outside. 3 and 1. Zooming out. Fourth inning. Indians trying to get on the scoreboard. They trail 2 0. Left field, the sample almost on the warning tramp, and he's way around in left field. Line drive, left field line, it is serving foul. And you can see why they had him played over that way. And the three quarters in the NBA, Philadelphia 85 and New Jersey 73. Three balls, two strikes. Andre Thornton steps in. 
at three infielders on the left side of the infield. Swing and a miss, strike three. Took something off. You know if he throws a fork ball in that, whatever that was, it was a good pitch. He gets his third strikeout. He puts the Indians down one, two, three. He's now retired six in a row. And at the middle of inning number four here in Texas, it's the Texas Rangers two, the Cleveland Indians nothing. It's natural to want the best, to reach for the brass ring, to find the trappings, need the wrappings. It's a natural thing. Invitations for you. We've got something for you. No, you're gonna like it. It's the natural thing. Come on. Come on, get steady. Come on. Come up to the natural thing. If imitations bore you, remember daily juice products are made with natural fruit juices, plus a bonus of vitamin C. You see, daily just gives fruit a little hug, and you know what a little hug does for you. Taste what it does for Daly's. Daly's juice products, naturally. Come on. Come on, get daily. Come on. Come on, get natural. Come up to the natural thing. Office. Eric Wilkins will face Buddy Bell after Gamble Jim Sundberg here in inning number four. And listen to the hand for Buddy. The hands here appreciate the fine defensive work. Wind up by the right hander. Pitch to Buddy is inside ball one. Buddy was hit by a pitch the first time up. Wilkins surrendered two runs in the second inning, but they were both unearned. 2 nothing Rangers. High fly ball, center field, Rick Manning cruising in. He has it. One guy in the fourth inning. Here's Oscar Gamble. He was safe on Andre Thornton's error. And that sort of opened the doors for the Rangers to pick up a couple of runs. After there was a man out, but he was hit by a pitch. Ground ball to first base off the glove of Thornton. Put runners at first and at second. And Sunberg walked to load him up. A sacrifice fly put in one run. The base hit drove in another. Inside, ball one. And it could have been a lot worse. After the hit by Norman made it two to nothing. Wills lined a single to center field. Rick Manning charged in, picked it up, fired to home plate, and nailed Sunberg. Down to low with a fastball. Two and out. Wilkins with a fastball, a slider, and a fork ball. Keeps the ball down very effectively, and that works well for him. 2 0 pitch. Fast ball, a bit outside, 3 0. Jim Sundberg, the on deck batter. Eric has struck out one, he has walked the pair, and he's hit a batter. He has given up two base hits. 3 0 pitch. Oscar takes. Inside, ball four. I don't think Oscar thought it was a ball. He was standing there. Now he goes to first base. Third walk issued by the Indian right-hander. And here's the catcher, Jim Sundberg. He threw the base on balls his first time up and then was nailed at home plate on the throw by Manning. You have to consider Rick has not really worked out very much since last Monday. Some throw. Yesterday was the first day he really worked out since last week. Go to first back safely. Check on the runner at first. Sundberg takes the fastball on inside, ball one. Gamble walks, he's on at first. On deck, Pat Putnam, left-hand batter. Sundberg right-handed, a throw to first and back safely. Eric Wilkins in spring training picked off three runners and he has a very quick move to first base. Gamble, not much of a lead. Down to low. Two balls, no strike. Frank Lucchese, coaching at third, flashes the signs to Jim Sunberg. Check to the runner at first, 2 0 pitch. Sunberg pops it up, first base side. Drifting into foul territory is Dwayne Kuiper. Over on the warning path, he makes the grab. Andre was there, but he backed away quickly. Kuiper called him off. 
Two men are down, and the batter, Pat Putnam, he drove a sacrifice fly to right center field his first time up. Picked up a run, battled in. Not an official time at bat. First baseman, Pat Putnam. Eric Wilkins. And the Indians trail 2-0 here in the fourth. Eric checks on the runner at first. Here's his delivery. Round ball, right side, in the right field, a base hit. Around second is Gamble. He'll hang on. Here's the throw back to second base. Dive and safe. Big turn at second by Gamble. Bobby Bonds fired it in. Kuiper grabbed the ball and dove for the bag. Gamble diving back at the same time. He got there first. Well, Putnam gets the base hit. The Indians had him played sort of up the middle. He drove the ball through the right side. Nelson Norman, the shortstop, who had a base hit his first time up. And he drove in a run. Third hit allowed by Logan. There's a strike at the knees. Gamble at second. Putnam at first. Slide and miss blowing away. Ball one on a strike. Nelson Norman batting at 400. One ball, one strike. Delivery. Swing and a miss. Good slider. One ball, two strikes. Wilkins has one strikeout. He struck out Oliver in the first inning. One two pitch. Swing and a foul back. Count holds. Ball one, strike two. Indians will be in Boston over the weekend and actually Monday too. They're off Friday. Play the Red Sox Saturday, Sunday, and Monday morning. Play a 11 o'clock game. That's the Patriots Day game, and that's the day they run the Boston Marathon. Shame we're playing because Joe and I would certainly be out running in that. <laughs> Inside, ball two, two and two. You say that every year. I know. I'm going to keep saying that every year. Someday we're going to get an open date and we're both going to look very bad when we don't show up. We'd look worse if we showed up. <laughs> That's true. Two balls, two strikes, two men out. <laughs> I've got to tell you, the fellows are running that mar- and the ladies are running that marathon. It's to be commended. That is a strong physical task. Two balls, two strikes. Eric backs off. Don't forget now, the Indians will be home next Tuesday afternoon at 12 o'clock against the same Texas Ranger ball club. And then Wednesday at 2. And Wednesday they have a big behind the fence party open to the public. Swing and a miss, strike three. Eric Wilkins gets his second strikeout and he puts the Rangers down in the fourth inning. No run. Rangers had one hit. No Indian errors and two men left. We have played four. The score, the Texas Rangers two, the Cleveland Indians nothing. What's the easiest, most economical way to get the clue to the game? In a van, a Dodge van. And they're just $46.58 today at Spitzer Dodge. Bill Gayhart and Spitzer Dodge are celebrating 75 years in the automobile business by giving you what may be the lowest prices ever on Dodge trucks and vans. Over 150 to choose from. Tough Dodge trucks, just $41.83. And Dodge vans, only $46.58. Come in and see us today at Spitzer Dodge in Columbus. Hello, Mother Nature here to talk about your sweet smile and how you can keep Mother Nature! Dear, can I help you, Mr... Uh, Decay. Tooth decay. Tooth decay? You've got a nerve coming... What do you want? A shame. A shame. If those kids don't stop flossing and brushing and choosing your healthful snacks, I'll be out of business. Oh, stop, Nick. What do you say, Mother Nature? What do I say? Brush them with fluoride toothpaste and feed them my super snacks. You can have a happy smile all your life, naturally. We go now into the Indian stand for the fifth inning. It'll be Alexander, Norris, and Cox. They try to get something going against the Rangers and Comer. Steve Comer's retired the last six in a row. He retired the first six, then gave up a hit to Cox, and he's taking the next six right out. Baltimore's batting on the last of the ninth with the Yankees leading five to two. Gary Alexander, first time up, popped the right field. Wind up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Right-hander Steve Comer popping the fastball. Some of the upcoming events at the stadium. 
April the 22nd will be Jacket Day. Youngsters 14 and under with a box reserved the general mission ticket. Receive an attractive Indian's jacket with the new Wahoo logo on it. That's Sunday, April the 22nd. Down to low. And of course, that April 22nd game will be played against the Chicago White Sox there in all weekend, the 20th, 21st, 22nd. First night game of the year will be Friday the 20th against the White Sox. First night game of the year in Cleveland, that is. One ball and a strike. Three on it, strike two. If Tom Watson is a favorite, he's going to be tomorrow. Apparently, that's behind the bench one. Well, Hugh Irwin has to be a top choice. One of his 20s. Sir, will be. Food will be served. Club game begins at 2.05. One ball, two strike pitch. Inside and high. Behind the bench one. The menu will include hot dogs, hamburgers, potato salad, cold floor, relish trays, soft drinks and coffee, all you can eat drink. And the crowd just put around and put it back. Next Wednesday, come on down and see us. Bring on this, like three. Oh, yeah. Jerry Alexander goes swinging that as the fourth strikeout by the way. Here's Jim Norris. He grounds it out to the third baseman, Buddy Bell. Norris has hit in all four games played by the Indians. Batting average currently at 353. Slider catching the outside corner, waist high and strike. Buddy Bell is in on the grass at third. Buddy has taken about two base hits away from the Indians tonight, both off Rick Manning. Fly ball to the field. Oliver's there. He pounds the glove and he has it. Two men down in the fifth inning. That's eight in a row that Comas polished off. Here's Ted Cox, the only man to get a hit, the only man to reach base against. Him. Ted Cox getting a chance to play on an everyday basis, and is he delighted? We're in the fifth. The Indians are down two to nothing. Swing and a miss on the curveball. Strike one. Pittsburgh Pirates are playing the Phillies, and they're going to the ninth. It is Philadelphia five and Pittsburgh four. Inside with a curveball, one ball and a strike. Wayne Kuyper on deck. Kuyper with that lead donut up on the barrel of the bat using rosin sack on his handle. And this one low and outside. Two balls and a strike. Here in Texas, 330 to the foul line. 400 feet to center field, 370 to the power alley. 11 foot high fence circling the ballpark. Outside and low, three balls and a strike. Right-hander checks the sign, goes to the windup. Strike two, fastball right through the middle. Minnesota at California tonight, Goats against Ryan. Minnesota beat the Angels last night, eight to one. Swing and a miss, right three. Put something off. And Cox goes swinging at five strikeouts for Coleman. He's retired nine in a row. And so in the fifth inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, and none left. At the end of four and a half, it's Texas 2, Cleveland nothing. And what's the easiest, most economical way to get the crew to the game? In a van, a Dodge van. And they're just $46.58 today at Spitzer Dodge. Bill Gayhart and Spitzer Dodge are celebrating 75 years in the automobile business by giving you what may be the lowest prices ever on Dodge trucks and vans. Over 150 to choose from. Tough Dodge trucks, just $41.83. And Dodge vans, only $46.58. Come in and see us today at Spitzer Dodge in Columbus. Or maybe a package across town. But if you slip and forget the right tip, you just might slow it down. Check your address, is everything found? Make sure that it's up and you skip. Package or that, I'm going to a farm. Slump your mail with the right tip. Oh, travel better. In a letter with the right tip. I'm a man, and you're a man. Travel better with the right tip. Help the handicapped. For the Texas Rangers, the top of the batting order, Will, Sample, and Oliver will face Eric Wilkins. 
Indians rookie right-handed gave up two runs in the second inning. They were both unearned. And that is the story of the game thus far. Two to nothing Rangers. Inning number five. Wills is one for two in the game. Takes the fastball a strike. Colby Hara playing at the edge of the infield grass. Line drive, center field, that's the base hit. That may have been the fork ball. Somebody threw a smoke bomb of some kind on the field behind Rick Manning. Will gets the base hit. That is his second. That is the fourth. That is the fourth of Wilkins. And we can make it some activity in the Indian bullpen. Ron Hassey running down that way. Is the left fielder Bill Sample. Sample has grounded the third. He has walked. Wills, a definite threat to steal, leads away at first. Pitch is a fastball too low. Picked off 52 stolen bases. Toward the first, he dives back safely. In his rookie year, he had 28. Sample right hand batter. Ball one. Toward the first, and he just gets back. He almost caught him leaning the wrong way. Gossage has come on to pitch for the Yankees in the ninth. They were leading 5-2 to two going into that ninth inning. Throw to first, back again with a dive. Wills is quick, and so is Eric Wilkins. The last two throws have been close. You know, the secret of being a good base runner is to be able to get off just as far as you can and still get back. And that's what he's doing, barely getting back. Inside, two balls, no strikes. Bill Sample has checked with Frank Lucchese back in the batter's box. 2-0 pitch. Inside, almost hit him. Good stop by Gary Alexander. He dug down a ball sail right over the back of his head. 3-0. Might be there. Eric is hurrying his pitches because of Wills being on first base and Gary Alexander going out to talk with him. And Al Oliver is on deck, so things will not get any better. Check to the runner. Pitch. Outside, ball four. That puts runners at first and at second with nobody out. And Al Oliver coming up. That is the fourth base on ball surrendered by Eric Wilkins. And in the bullpen, we have Don Hood up and throwing. And Dan Skolner is joining him. Skolner will also throw. Jeff Torborg. He's going to have to have a talk to Eric Wilkins. Jeff wearing a blue nylon jacket as he heads to the mound. Temperature 67 degrees when we started. We haven't lost much. It's a rather pleasant evening here in Texas. Let's check the scoreboard while we have the chance. National League. One game rained out this afternoon. The Cubs at St. Louis. In 11 innings, it was Montreal 3, the Mets 2. Tonight in Atlanta, it is the Cincinnati Reds, nine, the Atlanta Braves, four. The Reds are batting in the eighth. Pittsburgh's at Philadelphia with the Pirates batting in the ninth, and the Phillies lead them five to four. Now the meeting on the mound is broken up. The Dodgers are in Houston tonight. At the end of four, it's all tied up at three. Later on, San Diego, San Francisco. Catch up with the American League in just a moment. Runners at first and at second. Nobody out. Al Oliver stands in. He is 0 for 2 in the game. Line drives on the right field line. That's going to be an extra base hit. One run is in. Around third, racing and holding up is Sample in the second base for the double goes Oliver. Well, that Sample.
tackle. He came turning into third base. Lucchese was holding him up. I didn't think he was going to stop. Now Oliver continues to punish Indian pitching. He gets a double. Another run battled in. It's a three to nothing game now. Still nobody out. And here's Johnny Grubb. Here comes Jeff Torborg. And that will be all for Eric Wilkins. So the Indian rookie gets his baptism of fire here in this ball game. Eric Wilkins has been charged with giving up a total of three runs. He has been touched for five hits. He walked four. And he struck out two. He also hit a batter. He leads with two men on as his responsibility. Two of the three runs he has surrendered are unearned. Don Hood is coming on, and we'll be back to tell you about Don as we take this time out. Look, Andrew Don Hood making his first appearance of the season. He's 6'2", 180 pounds from Florence, South Carolina. Don last year won five and lost six in 36 games covering 155 innings. An earned run average of 4.47. This spring, Don Hood in the uh, spring training warfare down in Arizona was one and one in five games. That included a start at 3.97 ERA. Pitched 11 and one third innings, nine hits. Five runs all earned, struck out five, and walked four. Herp. And he picks up for Merrick Wilkins. Wilkins' record shows four plus innings. Three runs, five hits, four walks, and two strikeouts with a hit batter. And, of course, the two-man on base is responsibility. Don Hood picks up the sack of Rosin, places it on the mound just behind the pitching rubber, and now looks around at the infield to see where they're deployed. And will be facing Johnny Grubb. Grubb has grounded to the shortstop, hit one back to the mound that started a double play. Sample at third, Oliver at second. They both have good speed. Check to the runners, the pitch. Outside and low, ball one. Lucchese coaching at third. Fred Coney coaching on the first base side. Lucchese shouting something out to Oliver at second. They have Verizo almost playing behind the bag at second. Slider over the outside corner strike. Alexander fluffing a throw to third. Sample dives back in. Len Barker has joined Dan Spilder in the Indian bullpen. Time call, ball loose on the bullpen area, rolled in left field. Ron Hassey going over to get it. Philadelphia knocked off the Pirates tonight, 5-4. to four. Buddy Bell on deck. One ball and a strike to Grubb. 3-0. Rangers lead here in the fifth. The Indians trying to keep them from breaking it open. Runners at second and at third. Nobody out. The pitch. Curve breaks too low. Ball two, strike one. Breeze blowing in from right field. Not nearly as strong as it was last night. Check to the runners. 2-1 pitch. Bouncing ball at home plate foul. Ball two, strike two. Don Hood gets the new baseball. Rubs it up. Don takes the sign. Two pitch. Fly ball behind the infield. Back goes Kuiper. On comes Bobby Barnes. The tag at third. Here's the catch by Barnes. Here's the throw. The runner goes back. Bobby Barnes firing at home and Sample holds the third. One man down. And the batter, Buddy Bell. That's the gamble on deck. We'll send along a station break as we wait for Buddy to get in the batter's box. So will be Harris talking with Don Hood. This is the Cleveland Indians Baseball Network. This is all.
Join Max Allen on the Mr. Max Show weekday mornings, 5 till 10 a.m. right here on 3WJ, WWWJ, Johnstown. They're going to put Buddy on, and already Pat Corrales has sent John Ellis into the on-deck position. The hit for Oscar Gamble. Buddy Bell will be given the intentional walk. See the first walk allowed by Hood, fifth for Indian pitching. And we'll see John Ellis. John pinch hit last night, slide out. John has only been the bat that one time. And we'll see what Jeff Torborg does. He has two right-handers, Barker and Spiller in the bullpen. John Ellis. Jeff standing on the lowest step of the dugout, and here he comes. He was waiting for the official announcement. And that's who he wants. He wants Dan Spilner. So that's going to be all for Don Hood. His work is brief. He pitches one-third of an inning. He walks one. Does not strike anybody out. Does not allow a hit. And Dan Spilner will be on to see if he can stop the Rangers with the bases loaded. One man out here in the fifth inning. We'll be back to tell you about Dan as we take this time out. Buck Rogers in the 25th century. The right man in the right space at the right time. For 500 years, Buck Rogers has been saving himself for this moment. The future of the future depends on it. Buck Rogers in the 25th century. A universal release rated PG. Parental guidance suggested. Now showing at the Westerville Six Cinemas in the Westerville Mall. Come on down, look around, see what we've got on our lot. We're ready to deal for your new will, so bring some cash and we will hash over a deal that will be a steal. See me, Robin, at McFarland Brothers Sales and Service, two miles south of Mount Vernon on Columbus Road. Your complete tractor trailer sales and service center for new and used tracks and trailers and complete leasing service. That's McFarland Brothers International Trucks and Goodyear Tires just south of Mount Vernon on Route 3. Washington, D.C., 20525. A public service of this station. At Right-hander Dan Spilner on here in the fifth inning for the Cleveland Indians. Spilner making his second appearance of the year. He went two and a third innings of shutout relief against the Boston Red Sox on Sunday. Spilner, 6-1-190, last year with both San Diego and the Cleveland Indians. Spilner to face John Ellis in the fifth with Parker continuing to work in the bullpen. John Ellis standing in. Right-hand batter, slightly closed stand, deep in the batter's box. Builder will work out of the set position. Runners on all the bases. The pitch. Fastball is too high. Ball one. On deck is the catcher, Jim Thunberg. Rangers three. Indians nothing. We are in the fifth. The Rangers threatening with the bases loaded and one man out. Check swing. Did he go around? Umpire at first base says he did not. The ball is high. 2-0. John, a very strong individual, able to stop that bat. Ellis hitting for the designated hitter, Oscar Gamble. Foul ball sliced off to the right out of play. For the sake of statistical keeper numbers, the appearance by Ellis goes as an appearance by a DH and also as a pinch hitter. Two balls and a strike. Pitch. Inside. Three and one. Now Spilner says I'll try a new baseball. Three balls and a strike. Ellis has said his look to the third base coach, Frank Lucchese. Steps back in. Filner. Set. 3-1 pitch. Swing and a miss. 3-2. Good fastball by Filner. Three balls, two strikes.
High pop back of the plate. It's going to be out of play and will go to the 3 2 again. And Spillner, in relief of Don Hood, who relieved Eric Wilkins earlier this inning. Two of the men on base belong to Eric. Runner at first, Buddy Bell belongs to Don Hood. Outfield, not playing Ellis to pull. They're giving him a lot of room on the left field line. 3 2 pitch. Drive to center field. Back goes Manning. That's going to be deep enough to score the run. Manning grabs the ball. Here comes Sample holding it second as Oliver. And it's a four to nothing game. Johnny Ellis gets the job done. He hits the sacrifice fly to center. Picks up a run battled in. The run will be charged to Eric Wilkins. And the batter now will be the catcher, Jim Sunberg. Sunberg has walked and he's fouled out to the second baseman down the right field line. Right in batter. Slider over the outside corner of strike. Haven't heard anything from Baltimore for some time. Baltimore batting in the ninth, trailing five to two. Gossage came in in the ninth. It's been a long time since we had a report. One strike pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike two. In Kansas City, the Tigers have taken a three to two lead over the Kansas City Royals with Kansas City batting in the sixth. Two strikes on Jim Sunberg. Rangers leading four to nothing here in inning number five. Indians have had only one hit in this game. Rangers have five. Down too low. Baltimore tied the Yankees with three runs in the last half of the ninth inning, and they'll go to extra innings. Jim Palmer apparently still in the ball game. Down, too low, two balls, two strikes. Two men out, two men on for the Texas Rangers. Dan Spillner trying to get out of this jam. The delivery. Down, too low. It's three and two, full count, and the runners will be going. Sitting started with Bump Wills getting a base hit. Sample walked. Oliver doubled home one run. That was off Eric Wilkins. Grub fly to right off foot, then he walked, fell intentionally. On came Spillner. There go the runners. Foul ball at home plate. Spillner gave up a sacrifice fly to Ellis, and now he's 3 2 on Sunberg. Runners at first and at second. Last report down the road in Houston. It is 3-3, the Dodgers and the Astros with the Houston Astros batting in the fifth. And the Phillies defeated the Pirates tonight 5-4. Carlton over Blylevin. All three strike two. There they go. Ground ball, third base side. Harry charging, gloves it. Hurries his throw. They get him at first. The side retires. In the inning, the Rangers pick up a couple of runs, but it could have been a lot worse. Two runs on two hits to an old Indian error as the Rangers leave a pair. We have come through five innings here in Texas to score. The Texas Rangers four, the Cleveland Indians nothing. Nobody quite like you. You got your own thing to do. You like your beer, light and clear, refreshing like mountain air. For the mountains, the mountains of Buddha, reach out and you'll be here. Just reach out and you'll be here in the mountains of Buddha. Head for the mountains, the mountains of Buddha, reach out and you'll be here. Well, the Indians 
Indians come to bat in inning number six. They have only had one hit off this tough right-hander Steve Comer. That was a single by Cox in the third inning. And since that time, he has knocked off nine men in a row. In five innings, he's faced only one over the minimum. He's faced 16 batters, striking out five of them. Dwayne Kuyper, Tommy Verizon, and then Toby Harris. Wayne Kuyper popped up to Buddy Bell his first time. Philadelphia 76ers knocked off New Jersey tonight on their first playoff game, 122 to 114. That's the best out of three, isn't it? Right. Here's Dwayne Kuyper. Houston leads Atlanta at halftime, 57 to 51. I was reading in the paper today, Joe, the fellow who's contemplating buying the Houston franchise says that if he buys it, and the deal goes through, he's firing the general manager. Right. Line drive, right center field, chasing over his Oliver, still going. He reaches out and he grabs it. Wayne Kuyper out on a fly ball to center. Here's Tommy Verizon. That's 10 in a row this right hand is knocked off. Twelve thousand. 784 the attendance here tonight. Here's Tommy Verizon, right hand batter. Line drive, left field, back to sample. He is there and he has it. Well, if it's any consolation, he needs to at least hit the ball hard this inning. I hit it hard, and Verizon just hit it right on the nose, but all they've had is two outs. Here's Toby Harry. He has struck out twice against this right hander. You know, baseball is a funny game, no question about it, Joe Alley. Scouting and so forth. Here's a young man, Steve Comer, who was not drafted. 786 players were drafted that year, and he wasn't one of them. And here he is in the major leagues. Last year, he was 11-5. and five. Got a note, Herb. In that New Jersey Philly game, there were seven technical fouls called. John Williamson, Kevin Lockery, and the New Jersey trainer were all thrown out of the game. <laughs> oh, it's too high. <laughs> now that's when things are going bad when they throw the trainer out. Charlie Strasser, beware. <laughs> Fastball on outside. Two balls, no strike. Maybe things got so bad he decided to get out of there. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> 2-0. Oh. Toby Harrow waits. Takes it inside. 3-0. Oh. Homer has not walked about it yet. He has struck out fine. Here with a 3-0 count, two out in the sixth inning. Right through the middle, 3-1. 4-0, that's the score, and the Rangers have the four. Two in the second inning, two more in the fifth. Ground ball, foul over near the Indian dugout, goes into the Indian dugout. The Indians on the third base side, the Rangers on the first base side. The star Cedeno just hit a three-run homer, and Houston leads the Dodgers 6-3 after five. That was at the expense of Don Sutton. Yankees have failed in the 10th. Ball one now batting. Three balls, two strikes. A wind-up to Toby Hara. Check swing and hits the bat and it's fouled off. One bounce came into the glove of Sundberg behind home plate. Umpire John James will give home plate a little bit of a dusting. Three and two. Homer winds it up. Fly ball down the left field line. It's going to be foul in the seats out of play. Count remains. Ball three and strike two. Indians have had one hit off the right hand. He has retired the last 11. He's retired 17 of the 18 men he's faced, so he has been more than effective. Manning, the on-deck batter. Curveball is too low, and the Indians get their first base on balls. They break the string at 11. Here is at first. Here's Rick Manning. He has grounded out to Buddy Bell, but he made a good play going to his right for that one, and then he hit a line shot that looked like it was ticketed for at least a double, and Buddy Bell somehow leaps and backhanded the ball, and here comes the manager, Pat Corrales. He's pretty tough, you Walk one guy after getting 11 in a row, you're leading 4 nothing. the manager come out to talk to you. Well, Alexander was a little upset after the quick hook last night. 
Well, Corrales, I heard Corrales uh, interviewed on the radio today, and he said he really intended Comer to only go about five or six tonight. That's all he really hoped for. He might be just checking to see if he's strong enough. Pat Corrales, of course, has paid his dues, as they say. He's been around the Major League a long time. Player and coach. Very fine young man. He's 38 years old, and he knows pitching. Rick Manning stands in. The pitch to him is up high, ball one. Buddy Bell in on the grass at third. We're going to get action in the Texas bullpen. Ed Farmer is warming up. Check on the run of the pitch. Swing and a miss. Whenever I see Ed Farmer, I, I picture Rod Carew stealing home in Minnesota. I'll never forget that. You and me As both. long as I live. Rocky Calavino and I were working TV that, that summer. I was filling in for Harry Jones, and uh, Rocky and I sat in the booth that night. You were working radio, and Rocky called that one. I did, the same, before I did the same thing. I said, he's going to steal home and everybody in the ballpark move with Farmer. The pitch is foul back at a play. Harrow was going on it, and it'll be in the seat down below it. One ball, two strikes. Rick Manning, left-hand batter, with a ball, two-strike count. Coma comes to the plate, up too high, two and two. We are in the sixth. The Rangers have been in command. They lead four to nothing. Two men out. Harris at first. The pitch. Line drive, right field. Coming on is Johnny Grubb. He spears it. You know, the Indians hit the ball harder this inning than they have in any other inning this Game, three line drives and a walk. But three of the line drives all caught. So in the inning, no run, no hits, no errors, a walk and a man left. The Indians have only left two in this game. At the middle of the sixth, it is Texas four, Cleveland nothing. When you get your car fixed at Shell Auto Care, you get something you wouldn't expect. A written limited warranty. It guarantees parts and labor for 90 days or 4,000 miles of normal driving, whichever comes first. Any problems? Bring your car and your warranty back to Shell. They'll do the work over or refund every penny you've paid. Now seriously, did you expect it? Shell it's Shell. Everything you never expected car repairs to be. Sunset in the mountains. The sparkling waters in each stream slowly turning to shining gold. The high craggy peaks quietly glow in the fading light. And the stillness falls like a soft secret snow. It's time to sit back, relax, and feel good about the day. Sunset in the mountains. Don't miss it. Push. And for the mountains of Bush King. And Kaiser Bush, St. Louis, Missouri. Last half of the sixth inning, Pat Putnam, Nelson Norman, then the top of the batting order, Bump Wills to face Dan Spillner. In Baltimore, Paul Mirabella has come on to pitch for the Yankees in the tenth, so Baltimore might be stirring something up. He relieved Rich Gossage. Pitch to Putnam's a strike at the knees. Putnam in the game is one for one with a sacrifice fly. And a run batted in, obviously. Wind up by the Indian right-hander. Slider breaks low and inside. It's a ball and a strike. Four runs, five hits, no errors for, ball for the Rangers. No runs a hit and one error for the Indians. Fast ball is high. Two balls a strike. Left hand hitting Pat Putnam. Fly ball, left center field. Manning cruising to his right. Teddy Cox is there. Ted calls and he has it. One man down in the sixth inning for the Rangers. And we'll take a look at the shortstop, Nelson Norman. He singled home a run in the second inning, and he struck out swinging his next time up. George Doc Medich now warming up in the bullpen for the Texas Rangers. Fast ball strike over the outside corner. Down too low with a curveball. One ball and a strike. Nelson Norman, right hand batter. He has a close stand. Speed are fairly close together. 
Down below the knees, over the plate. Ball two and a strike. Still in the works quickly. Ground ball, back past the mound. Coming on is Verizon. He has it. Fires over to Thornton. And two minute down. 6-3 on that out. Two gone in the sixth, and here's Bump Will. He's had a pretty good night. He lined out to the second baseman. And since that time, he's had two base hits to center field. He has scored one run. Switch hit a batting left-handed. Harrop moves in on the grass at third. Outside and low ball. Wind up by the Indian right-hander. Inside and low. Break your point and call that a strike. This one is off the inside part of the plate. Two balls and a strike. Down in the bullpen. Ed Farmer, who had sat down, is up and throwing again along with Doc Medich. Foul ball down the right side. Scream against the seats along the right field line. Baltimore obviously doing something in the tent because Gossage went into the tent and Mirabella and Tidrow have both come on in the tent. I would say they have something moving. 2-2 two, two pitch. Outside, it's 3-2. and two. On deck, Bill Sample. 3-2 delivery. Bouncing ball, first base side. Andre knocks it down, picks it up. Throws to spill in the covering. They get bump wheels and they get the Texas Rangers in the sixth inning. No run. No hits. No errors. None left. We go to the seventh to score. The Texas Rangers four and the Cleveland Indians nothing. What's the easiest, most economical way to get the crew to the game? In a van. A Dodge van. And they're just $46.58 today at Spitzer Dodge. Bill Gayhart and Spitzer Dodge are celebrating 75 years in the automobile business by giving you what may be their lowest prices ever on Dodge trucks and vans. Over 150 to choose from. Tough Dodge trucks, just $41.83. And Dodge vans, only $46.58. Come in and see us today at Spitzer Dodge in Columbus. It's different. It's exciting. It's the kind of club that you wish you'd known about sooner. Marco Polo, the super disco for people over 21. With the finest selection of current music and the sound system unconditionally guaranteed to shake your senses and your soul. Every Wednesday is ladies night and happy hour lasts all day long. Marco Polo, 1605 West 5th Avenue in Columbus. Right across from North Star. Towards the Atlanta Braves, nine to five. Pastore came on in the ninth inning. That young man has pitched very well for Cincinnati thus far. In fact, picked up a save according to this wire report. Hume was the winner. Bobby Bonds in the seventh inning as the Indians trying to get something cranked up against Steve Comer, who has given up one hit and one walk over the first six innings of play. First pitch, Bond slaps it to third. Fell the pickup, high throw, but Putnam reaches up and grabs it. Bonds retired for the third time on a ground ball. One away in the seventh, and here comes Andre Thornton. And he has bounced to the shortstop and struck out swinging in two previous trips. Andre Thornton. Four to nothing in favor of the Texas Rangers. And we're in the top half of the seventh inning. Wind up by Comer in the pitch, and Thornton wraps the ball foul beyond the third base dugout. Strike one. Sparky Lyle now up in the bullpen along with Ed Farmer. Young man reached over the railing and beat the ball boy to the ball with his hat. Swing and a miss by Andy. Thornton with strike two. They had only 3,000 people tonight in Cincinnati, in the Atlanta to see that game with the Reds. The 
pitch. Thornton swing and a miss on a bad pitch. Thunberg dropped the ball, picked it up and tagged Andy. Two outs in the seventh inning. Well, in the sixth, it really began to look as though the Indians might be breaking through. On the right-hander, Comer, primarily because they were at least hitting the ball hard. They were hitting it at people, but they were hitting hard. But now in the seventh inning, Comer has again appeared to be master of the situation and has two quick outs, nobody on, and Alexander with the first pitch pops it up, foul. Sunberg and Putnam getting together. Putnam, the first baseman, makes the running catch and foul ground onto the warning path in front of the first base dugout on the side is redone. So it's making it look easy. Three up, three down. And at the end of six and one half innings of play, it's Texas 4, Cleveland nothing. At Shell Auto Care, being good with your hands isn't good enough. Their mechanics have to pass tests for brake work, tune-ups, air conditioning, and front-end work. They have to be certified by Shell, the National Institute for Automotive Service Excellence. You know, it's funny. A lot of people don't expect much from mechanics, but they're the people who haven't been to Shell Auto Care. It's everything you never expected car repairs to be. Sample Oliver and Grubb will test the right-hander Dan Spilner. We have seen Wilkins, Hood, and Spilner for the Indians. Defensively for the Tribe, Thornton at first, Kuyper at second, Verizer at short, Toby Hare at third, Cox and left, Manning in center, Bonds in right, Gary Alexander catching. Sample mounts to third of the first inning, walks in the third, and walks to score to the fifth. So he is officially also one of the Kansas City. 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 Here's Al Oliver with a strikeout, a fielder's choice, and a double down the right field line that drove in the run. High drive, left center field, but Cox to his left makes the catch. Two outs for the seven. Spilner has done very well. Yes, he has. Danny, Danny, early in the spring, looked like he was not really popping the baseball. Didn't have good velocity. About the last two times out during spring training, he really fired. And he's going good here again tonight. Johnny Grubb, a bouncer to the shortstop, a 1-6-3 double play and a fly ball to right. Spillner throws, Grubb takes the strike, strike one. Now the tandem in the Texas bullpen now, Sparky Lyle and Doc Medich. Strike one pitch. Grubb fouls one back over the screen into the seat below us, and the count is strike two. On half of the seventh inning, four to nothing, Texas leads. Pick up two in the second and two more in the fifth. Wind up and the pitch. Grub checks ring and too far. Strike three. Oh, Spellner records his first strike out. The third by Indian pitching. And the inning is over. One, two, three. That's eight in a row retired by Dan Spellner. And at the end of seven, it is still Texas four, Cleveland nothing. How do you pick a good house from the rest? How can you tell if you get what you pay for? When you see the house symbol, we're looking at a house with a 10-year protection plan. A decade of protection and peace of mind. So look for the house symbol. It means you're covered for a long time. The warranty. That's how, that's how. Fisher and Son Incorporated, the area's only how builder, exclusively represented by McMahon Real Estate Company. What's the easiest, most economical way to get the crew to the game? In a van. A Dodge van. And they're just $46.58 today at Spitzer Dodge. Bill Gayhart and Spitzer Dodge are celebrating 75 years in the automobile business by giving you what may be their lowest prices ever on Dodge trucks and vans. 
over 150 to choose from. Tough Dodge trucks just 41.83, and Dodge vans only 46.58. Come in and see us today at Spitzer Dodge in Columbus. Well, Steve Comer, after going seven fine innings, is relieved. They're bringing on Sparky Lyle. Joe mentioned a while ago, Comer's not pitched that much recently. They don't want to force him to take a chance on doing some damage. He has only allowed one hit over the first seven innings. Walked one, struck out six. He leaves, and he can be the pitcher of record on the winning side. He can't lose it. And on to pitch comes Albert Walter Sparky Lyle. Sparky, 6'1", about 195 pounds. He is now 34 years old. But the Yankees last year won nine and lost three with an earned run average of 3.47. He is the only relief pitcher to ever be a Cy Young Award winner. He's pitching 680 games in the major leagues, all out of the bullpen. He will face the Indians here in the eighth. And he'll face Jim Norris for openers and feeds him low, ball one. Last year was the first year that I can recall that Lyle had trouble with the Indians. There's a pitch high, and it's 2-0. Oh. He was 0-1 against the Tribe, but... I don't really remember at any time that he showed that mastery that he had previously. He didn't pitch that much either. Pitch is a strike to the inside corner. Two and one. Well, there have been days in the past when Sparky just walk out there, flip the glove on the mound, and it'd be all over. Here's the two-one pitch. Chopped foul back to the base of the screen. Two balls, two strikes. Well, since they've been compiling the save statistic back in 1966, he has saved 194 games. That's more than anybody they on record. All right, Comer really did a number tonight. Oh. Seven innings of one hit ball. Good sinking fastball, good change up, fine slider, and outstanding control. What more do you need? Two balls, two strikes. Wind up in the pitch. Norris wraps it up. One hop to the mound. Grabbed by Lyle, runs toward first, flips the ball over to Putnam, and there's one away in the eighth inning. And this brings up Ted Cox. Cox slapped a single to center field and struck out in two previous trips. That base hit by Ted Cox, the only hit of Texas pitching tonight. My, Medich continues to work in the bullpen. Wind up by Lyle on the first pitch, strike one. Mark and Lyle will throw that slider any time, any part of the ball game. Doesn't make it even what the count is, what the situation is. Strike one pitch inside, one and one. One of those sliders, it doesn't break big, but it's quick and it goes down. Moves into the right-hand batter. Wind up by Lyle, the 1-1 one -one offering to Ted Cox. Chops the ball for the shortstop. Bell cuts in front of him. Buddy on the run throws. He's out. Buddy Bell has put on a bit of a fielding show here tonight for the Rangers. He made a play on a line drive off the bat of Manning back in the fourth inning that Manning just could not believe. Here's Kuiper, a pop-up to the third baseman and a fly ball to the center fielder. Zip for two on the night. Texas leading four to nothing. They've out hit the Indians five to one. Wind up. Miles pitch. A fastball strike of the knee. Strike one. Putnam at first. Wills at second. Norman at short. Bell in the grass at third. Sample in left. Oliver in center. Grubb in right. Sunberg catching. Lyle pitching. Strike one to Kuiper. Check swing. And checked in time. A check for the third base umpire, Jeff Brown. And he says he did check in time. One ball, one strike. The pitch. Uh, again, a fastball. Again, low. Two and one the count. Tom Verizer on deck. Wind up. Two one pitch. Kuiper lifts a foul fly out of play to the left side. That'll be in the chairs. Two balls, two strikes. The same Texas Rangers will be in Cleveland for day ball next Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesday the 17th at 12.05. And Wednesday, the 18th, at 2.05 p.m. Rangers come back again in early August. That will include a Sunday doubleheader on August the 5th. And we'll be back down here for three night games over a weekend in mid-August. Wind up with a 2-2 pitch. Kuiper wraps the bouncer back to Will. Gets it on the second big hop. Throws the first. Kuiper's gone. And so are the Indians. 1-2-3 in the eighth. At the end of seven and one-half innings of play... Texas 4, Cleveland nothing. Hey, listen to this. It's new from Daly's. It's the fruit-flavored drink, Little Hug. A little barrel of fun and flavor. Choose orange, grape, cherry, lemon, lime, or punch. 
Just look for the little barrel at your store. And hey now, save those little barrels to keep stuff in. Stuff like crayons, pencils, buttons, toys, and whatever. Give your loves a little hug from Daly's. And say, don't forget Daly's year after year favorite, Daly's Concentrate. The regular size bottle makes 26 glasses and comes in eight different flavors. The gallon size concentrate makes 104 glasses of delicious drink and comes in seven flavors. Costs only about three cents a glass. Thirsty? Quench it with Daly's Concentrate. No sugar needed. Setting against Dan Spilner, Bell, Ellis, and Sunberg. And to the bullpen for the Indians, Victor Cruz starts to warm up. Wind up by Spilner and the pitch to Buddy Bell. Foul ball back up into the second section behind home plate. Strike one. Buddy tonight has been hit by a pitch, scored the first Texas run, slide to center field, and was intentionally walked. Takes low, one ball, one strike. Buddy, one for five in this series, but he has been bordering on spectacular with his glove. One-one pitch. A stride. Knee-high outside corner. One ball, two strikes. Stillner looks in and gets the sign. Here comes the one-two pitch to Buddy. Low. Two balls, two strikes. Stillner cranks it up. Two-two pitch to Buddy. D.E. Reich, three, knee high. Alexander fires that ball down to Toby Harris, third. Buddy Bell walks slowly back to the third base dugout. Two strikeouts for Stolner. That's nine in a row. He's polished off. John Ellis came on to bat for Oscar Gamble in the D.H. roll. Back in the fifth inning of play, lifted the sacrifice fly ball to center field, scoring sample. So Ellis comes to bat now for the second time and the first time against Spilner. Fouls it back to the screen, strike one. Looking ahead to the ninth, Verizer, Hera, and Manning do against Sparky Lyle. Wind up in Spilner's pitch. Check swing, ball hits the bat, skips right by the guys gathered at the far end of the third base dugout and up into the seat. Strike two. Randy Jones against the Count of Montefusco tonight in San Francisco. Comes the 0-2 pitch to Ellis. Fastball inside, one and two. During spring training, the Count was really firing the baseball. Stoner ready. Nods at the sign from Alexander. The 1-2 pitch to John Ellis is low. Two balls, two strikes. Victor Cruz throwing in the bullpen for the Indians. The 2-2 pitch to Johnny Ellis. Let's say fly ball into short right center. Kuiper back waving the outfielders away. Makes the backpedaling catch to us. Jim Sunberg walked and was thrown out on the plate in the second inning when a single to center field by Bump Wills set up Sunberg's scamper to the plate from second and Manning threw him out. Sunberg then Fouled out to Kuiper in the fourth inning and bounced to the third baseman in the fifth. Comes to bat here with two outs and nobody on in the home half of the eighth. Texas leading four to nothing. Line up and the pitch. Low ball one. Rangers have out hit the Indians tonight five to one. The only base hit, Ted Cox with a single in the third inning. 1-0 pitch. D.E. Reich, fastball, knee high. Last of the eighth. Medich has finished his work in the Texas bullpen. 1-1 one, one pitch. Sunberg takes low. 2-1. Pat Putnam on deck. Tomorrow night, Herb and I will be right back here with you. Should be a dandy. Wait and Jenkins. 8.35 for the first pitch in Cleveland. 2-1 pitch here, and Sunberg takes outside. 3-1. up in the next pitch. Sunberg pops it up. Back goes Hera. Over comes Verizer, the shortstop. At the foul line behind third, Pace makes the catch in fairground. Sunberg pops to the shortstop to retire the side. Three up, three down. And we're going to the ninth at Arlington. The score, Texas four, Cleveland nothing. 
I'm gonna scout the America others pass by. You know, there is a four-wheel drive vehicle with the brisk handling of a subcompact car. Come on in to McFarland Brothers, just south of Mount Vernon on Route 3 and 36, and test drive Scout 2, highly maneuverable four-wheel drive. It's got the turning circle of a subcompact car, yet inside Scout 2, there's 82 cubic feet for cargo. Test drive Scout 2 now at McFarland Brothers. Aware. 30 seconds on depression. I wonder if I'm depressed. Chronically depressed people show many secondary symptoms, such as fatigue, insomnia, and hyper-irritability. Depressed people find it hard to hold a job, eat properly, or laugh. I guess I'm depressed. For a free report on the various ways to treat depression, write AWARE, Box 55, Los Angeles, California, 90053. AWARE, a human concern project, the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We have a change for the Texas Rangers at first base. Mike Jorgensen comes on to play at first base. Baltimore came up with a run in the 10th and beat the Yankees 6-5. to five. Stanhouse over Gossage. Stanhouse came on in the 10th inning of play. Rick Dempsey had the game winning RBI on that one. Getting his former teammates. Well, here's the ninth. Verizer 0 for 2 with a fly ball to center and a line drive to left. Takes the first pitch for a strike from Sparky Lyle. Strike one. Fine job of work by the Indian right-handed Dan Spillner. He worked three and two-thirds innings. And he retired everybody that he faced. Marked off 11 men in a row. Two strikes to count. Right-hand batter. Wind up by Lyle. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Check swing. Ball bounce foul over to the bat boy. Lyle goes out behind the mound. Now turns his attention to home plate. Winds up and throws. And Verizer chops another foul over to the third base dugout. The count remains at 0-2. Lined up by Sparky Lyle. And the pitch, Verizer bangs the ball back to Nelson Norman, who picks it up and throws him out. Hey, Nelson Norman may be a fine young ball player, but it seems to me he takes a long time getting rid of the baseball. We've had a lot of close plays at first base where you wouldn't normally think they should be so close. Right. Toby Hera struck out twice and walked once. He walked in the sixth and ended a string of 11 in a row, retired by Steve Comer, the start to say that Steve Comer was impressive is putting it mildly. A one-hitter over hey. seven innings. First pitch is a strike to Toby Harris. Strike one. Seven innings. Comer faced only 23 batters, giving up one hit and one walk. Wind up. Strike one pitch. Hera pops it foul. That one should make the seat behind the first base dugout, and it does with Jorgensen and Sunberg coming over. the ninth, the Indians very rapidly running out of time. Trailing four to nothing. Obiera ready, slightly closed right hand stance. Lyle wheels and deals and Hera chops the ball foul over in front of the third base dugout. The fat boy over there getting a lot of business. End of three. Atlanta has battled back to take an 89-85 lead at Houston in the NBA. Breaking ball high, one ball, two strikes. And the one-two pitch. Hera fouls another one out of play to the right. Down in the Astrodome tonight, Houston leads Los Angeles 6-3, to three, batting in the eighth. Lined up on the pitch, and Toby Herrera wraps one down the third baseline to Buddy Bell. The long throw in time. There are two outs in the ninth inning of play. And this will bring up Rick Manning. Manning has bounced to third, 
been robbed of a hit on a great diving grab by Buddy Bell and then lined to the right fielder at the sixth inning of play. Left-hander Sparky Lyle against the left-hand batting, Rick Manning. First pitch, Rick takes low, ball one. Next delivery, and Manning takes a strike at the knees. One ball, one strike. Two outs and nobody on in the ninth. A 1-1 one -one pitch, Manning chops the ball foul into the first base dugout. One ball, two strikes. While waiting now for another baseball on our 10th inning show coming up, Herb Score will be chatting to a man in the know, Dick Butler, the supervisor of umpires. Should find out something about the umpiring situation, I suppose. I hope. Sparky Lyle with a 1-2 count. The pitch to Manning. Shoots one foul into the seats on the left, and it's still one ball, two strengths. This is the ninth at Arlington. Wind up by Sparky Lyle on the 1-2 pitch to Manning. Swing and a foul back on the screen. Still a ball and two strikes. Manning playing in his first game of the year. Had a throat infection and had to miss the first four outings. Tonight he has gone 0 for 3, but he's hit the ball hard, and he's also made one outstanding throw from the outfield. the windup and the one-two pitch. Manning takes high. Two balls, two strikes. And the two-two offering by Lyle to Manning. Chopped on the first baseline. Lyle comes quickly, picks up the ball, pulls it out of the game. One-two, three on the ninth. The final score, the Texas Rangers four, and for the second straight night, the Indians nothing. And we'll be back to wrap it up after this timeout. What's the easiest, most economical way to get the crew to the game? In a van, a Dodge van. And they're just $46.58 today at Spitzer Dodge. Bill Gayhart and Spitzer Dodge are celebrating 75 years in the automobile business by giving you what may be the lowest prices ever on Dodge trucks and vans. Over $150 to choose from. Tough Dodge trucks, just $41.83. And Dodge vans, only $46.58. Come in and see us today at Spitzer Dodge in Columbus. You've heard the old saying, prevention is the best medicine. Will solve some of the problems your car may have before they happen with a bumper-to-bumper -bumper auto inspection from Merle's Union 76 from the Square in Johnstown. Merle's Union 76 will check the brakes, belts, exhaust, and everything around and in between your car. And of course, you'll receive only the best guaranteed service on any work your car may need. In the long run, you'll save money by having a periodic bumper-to-bumper -bumper inspection at Merle's Union 76. Master Charge and Visa are honored. It's at Merle's Union 76 on Monday through Saturday, 7 to 9, Sundays, 9 till 7. For tonight's ball game, and the Texas Rangers wipe out the Indians. The Ranger pitching staff has now put together 23 consecutive scoreless innings, and the Indians have been unable to score in the last 21 innings. Tomorrow night, hopefully, uh, those statistics can be altered. I'll tell you more about that a little bit later. Here's the way it went tonight. For the Texas Rangers, four runs, five hits, no errors. They left six. For the Cleveland Indians, no runs, just one base hit. A Ted Cox single in the third inning. The Tribe stranded six. Starter and loser for the Cleveland Indians in his Major League debut, Eric Wilkins, 0-1. Of the four runs Wilkins surrendered, two of them unearned. And the winning pitcher, Steve Comer, who pitched the one-hit ball over the first seven innings. Sparky Lyle came on to finish it up. He will not receive credit for a uh, save in as much as he went only the two innings. But he did put together a fine performance in relief. Uh, typical Sparky Lyle show. So the Rangers have now won three in a row at the outset of the season, and the Indians have gone to one and four. We'll tell you how the run scored right after we take this time out. <laughs> 